Good morning. My name is Steve Edmonds, and I'm here to present Hemp for Water. Um, a lot of people uh, are aware of hemp and its many different functions. A lot of people aren't. Um, there are over 50,000 different functions and, and applications and products that can be utilized from cannabis sativa, otherwise known as hemp. We're looking at this as industrial hemp. And we think we found a better way to clean water. All the rivers and lakes in Florida and pretty much all over the world uh, share two common problems. And that is excess and in nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, and it costs billions and kills our ecosystems every time that these nutrients are in an overabundance and create a super bloom of algae. Those algae blooms then move across the water bodies and to adjacent water bodies and create all, all sorts of horrible problems. Uh, one of those problems uh, could be red tide. Another one of those problems could be brown tide. Uh, and the most impactful problem that I've seen is cyanobacteria, uh, which is a uh, toxic uh, a neurotoxin at that, that is produced from the blue-green algae blooms that are occur occurring all over the state. Um, in addition to that, all of our rivers and lakes, uh, when we're measuring the TMDLs, those are the total managed daily loads that are going on into each one of those water bodies. All of these water bodies that the state measures are coming in at number one and number two with nitrogen and phosphorus as being the leading TMDLs that are going into these water bodies on a constant basis. The neat thing about nitrogen and phosphorus in relation to hemp is that that happens to be hemp's two favorite foods. It is a voracious consumer of these two nutrients and and a, a few others as well, but these are the primary foods that that the plant uses to metabolize and grow itself. And like all other things that we work with with the plant, we're not seeking you know any kind of massive disruption to the systems that exists. We're just seeking a, a, a homeostasis, a balance. Um, we are looking to stabilize the ecosystem. There's nothing wrong with nitrogen and phosphorus in normal loads. The problem is the excess of the loads. So our idea is to put hemp uh, into the ecosystem in a controlled manner on floating biomass and then grow that hemp and then remove that hemp after it's gone through its life cycle thus removing the nit nitrogen and phosphorus it metabolizes as food and any of the nitrogen and phosphorus that's left over in the plant itself gets removed from the ecosystem and helps bring those levels down to the to the normal levels that we're we're seeking once we're done with that the hemp can be then used for a variety of industrial purposes um, and we can scale from there ladies and gentlemen this is the first thing that I'm aware of that can actually pull metric tons from the waters and lakes that are affected by the excess nitrogen and phosphorus. So this process is called phytoremediation. And phytoremediation uh, works, as I said before, by utilizing growing industrial hemp on floating biomass. The biomats are a, a technology that are licensed by Biohaven Technologies, and Martin Ecosystems are the ones that uh, create the, the mats themselves. Uh, they have licensed the technology from Biohaven. Uh, we then work with uh, Martin Ecosystems to get the, the mats at, a, at the best cost possible, and we set them up in rivers and lakes to do the job of phytoremediation. What's occurring here is a, a biosphere that's created. And from the surface of the water 
to the tip of the plants were engaging in in a uh, a, a creation of a of, of an of an ecosystem or in addition to the ecosystem that is situated to go after that nitrogen and phosphorus. Not only does the plants and their growth by feeding their roots directly from the water uh, go after the nitrogen and phosphorus, but the biosphere that's created from the mat system itself uh, and the growth of plants on those mats creates a whole subsystem of microbes and, and microorganisms and bacteria and, and all these different things that are all natural and all part of the process. Uh, but absolutely aid in, in what we're doing in phytoremediation. This is a non-chemical, non-mechanical, all natural way to remediate specific nutrients. And we do it with hemp. Why did we go with hemp? Well, <clears throat> there, was a, there was a Canadian study done uh, now about five or six years ago that was based on terrain. Uh, looking at the nutrients, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus, that could be obtained from, from the soil by growing hemp. Uh, the Canadian study is a contemporary study to a lot of other things that have been going on around the world, including the cleanup at Chernobyl, uh, the use of it uh, in Japan, uh, the use of it in Southeast Asia for, for heavy met metals and, and sodium and cadmium and a couple of other things, excuse me, sulfur and cadmium. Uh, and it was known to our team that, that the plant was an amazing remediator on land. What we didn't know for sure or have the exact data on was what it would do in the water. And that's the exciting part um, and where we have to update this presentation. Uh, as we originally started off with uh, Dr. Whitehurst, who was a 30-year 30, 30 biochemist in, in the petro industry, actually. Uh, and his job working for big oil was to look at and analyze alternative uh, possibilities and, and systems. Uh, he was the first person to look at the idea and extrapolate it out to what it would take to, to uh, um, clean Lake Okeechobee. Uh, and that's when we got excited and decided to do a lot more research because he absolutely supported the idea, his white paper, and we moved on from there. And basically what his white paper said was that we could, if we were able to situate a, a kilometer square of surface area of these mats. Now you wouldn't wanna do that contiguously. You'd wanna polka dot them all over the lake basically. Um, but if we were able to do that, he estimated that 450 metric tons of phosphorus and 7 million pounds of nitrogen would be able to be removed by the plant. We are now happy to announce that after four years of research since this white paper was promulgated, um, we have much more uh, precise numbers and estimates. And we were originally thinking that we would be measuring in micrograms uh, and we're gonna be measuring in milligrams of uptake. So um, I believe that these numbers are probably going to end up being wrong. Uh, I think that, that we're actually going to get a better uptake of nutrients from the plants and from our system, uh, the, especially in phosphorus than we were originally anticipating. And this is where we are going to add um, new data that, that Dr. Calvin has provided for, um, for our current uptake uh, possibilities. But Lake Okeechobee is approximately 440,000 440, square acres. It's the 10th largest lake in the United States and it receives water from four adjacent basins. It's considered ground zero, and this would be the largest project, uh, certainly in Florida, possibly uh, possibly in the country, if we were to tackle such an issue. Um, if we find the money, we're ready to do this, I believe, with the research that we've been doing over the last four years and the data we've been obtaining. 
but we don't have to start at you know the moon or the stars, so to speak. Uh, we can start at a at a smaller lake and 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 improve ourselves going up. Uh, I I'm just letting y'all know that we're ready. Um, if that square kilometer was employed according to Whitehurst, you're looking at the elimination of not only 450 metric tons of phosphorus per year and 7 million pounds of nitrogen per year. By the way, that's approximately what's going into the lake from the four basins that are feeding it. It would help eliminate the discharge destructions primarily. That's the reason why this whole program was uh, created. I grew up in South Florida. I grew up a mile away from, from the locks. And, and when I was a kid, I, I used to be able to fish for creatures that were way bigger than me on a regular basis. Um, and that area and ecosystem doesn't exist anymore for a lot of reasons, development, people, so forth. But nonetheless, less of those reasons is discharging from Lake Okeechobee. Lake Okeechobee is our, is our uh, hydrological management system, according to the Army Corps of Engineers. And when it exceeds 17.1 feet, they will discharge. Now, there's nothing I can do about the discharge waters, but what I can do is make sure that those waters do not have an excess of nitrogen and phosphorus. Because when they do have an excess of nitrogen and phosphorus, they hit that brackish water and that's when they create the blue-green algae blooms and the cyanobacteria. And in 2013 alone, that equated to over $5.5 billion in one year of economic loss. That's split between the West Coast and the East Coast. Um, and that has occurred multiple times since uh, 2013 at various different billion-dollar figures. Um, not only could we help maintain the ecosystems that we are currently losing ecotourism from. But Lake Okeechobee used to be the premier uh, bass fishing spot in the world with sandy bottoms and all the tournaments were there. And the whole lake was a, a, was a, was a great uh, um, economic system in itself that, that uh, thrived off of this ecotourism that doesn't exist anymore. Um, a little bit, you know, here and there with some trailer parks, but not like it used to. Um, that could be returned. So <clears throat> at the time that I did this presentation, we were at phase two um, and we are actually now in phase three. But when we were in phase two, uh, we were uh, continuing to do our research and garnering uh, that data that I've been hinting to that we need to put into the presentation um, and proving our hypothesis. Uh, as I said a moment ago, we were originally thinking that this would be measured in, in, in micro liters and grams. And we are finding that milliliters and grams are more appropriate. We also had no idea that the, the plant was going to be as uh, voracious as it is when it comes to phosphorus. And although nitrogen and phosphorus is a problem all over the world and all over the country, phosphorus in particular is a major problem for the state of Florida. We have uh, uh, an excess amount of phosphorus um, in most of our rivers and lakes that are way higher than even the country averages. Um, partially that's from you know, the fact that we are on a bed of, of limestone. Uh, partially that's from development, partially that's from uh, poor infrastructure that's designed for 4 million people, uh, you know, dealing with 23 million people. And partially that's from some of our major industries uh, that we would like to help uh, and not, not fight. We would like to partner with and, and, and work together to, to create, uh, uh, you know, a better future for everybody. Um, but we have established that the plant through our data research at South Florida State College under the direction of Dr. K. Calvin, that the plant will uptake uh, uh, an incredible amount of phosphorus 
and an incredible amount of nitrogen in all of our sample readings. Um, in other words, we've done it at the lab scale um, and at the research scale. It's time for us to go to phase three. Phase three is a proving project, uh, something that is a live project, a retention pond, a small pond, a small lake, a medium lake, a large lake, Lake Okeechobee. I'm up for any of the above that, that any uh, municipality, county or state or federal government is willing to work with our 501c3 status to, to fund and make happen. That's why we created a 501c3 is to first educate and then to implement the data that we knew we were going to discover to be able to help solve the problem. So what will happen after phase three? Because phase three is done is going to be done manually. It's going to be done with, with lots of people, lots of mats, and in the techno technological phase that we're in right now. The future means technological development. The future means using the advantages of technology and, and uh, um, computer uh, advancements. Um, these mats will be eventually encased uh, uh, by some sort of drone slash robotic uh, apparatus that will be controlled by uh, a, a single center uh, computer that we'll be able to send out to specific coordinates that are nice and removed and away from, from people and, 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 uh, and protected from animals and providing all sorts of data while the plants are doing their job of living and feeding from the water. Um, the future is, is scale and that's how we are going to be able to grow the plants on multiple bodies of water and in a fashion that's manageable and sustainable. As we grow this project and we're growing uh, more and more locations, we will be creating more and more plant material. Um, as that happens, we no longer need to rely on government dollars or tax dollars. We will be sustaining ourselves because we will be creating the in selling the raw products to create other products that will be marketable um, and, and be producing enough resources to be able to, to, to grow the efforts um, into the future and for a long time. Uh, so that's basically uh, what Hemp for Water is and what it's about. Um, what we need is your help to, to tell everybody that we're ready that it's time to, to uh, stop uh, seeing if we can and, and actually do what we know. Um, we need all forms of government help, local, state, federal. Uh, we're going after grants. We're going after partnerships. We're going after private partnerships. Anybody that knows of a corporation that has a similar uh, mission or outlook in, in trying to you know, clean up our mess uh, because you know, ultimately this is our mess as as people. Um, we are uh, um, we are looking to 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 work with the right with the right partners to 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 move this forward. Um, and if you need to get these are some of our our community sponsors. Um, and if you need to get in touch with me, um, oh, some of our resources, some of the pictures. Um, here's my contact information and some of our other ways to find out more about Hemp for Water. Thanks very much. Have a great day.